Hello ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me again for another episode of Run Level Zero. Folks, on today's episode we are going to take a look at Simplice Linux. Simplice has been around for about five years now and they continue to grow and, and get better with every release. Uh, it is based on Debian SID, which is the unstable branch. Uh, so you're going to get a nice uh, rolling release cycle or a semi-rolling release cycle. Beginning with their website, uh, they have a nice expansive website. Uh, they have good support. Uh, they have a nice wiki. They have a Simplice community, a nice, uh, a nice forum here where you can find out just about anything you need. And it is, uh, does offer, looks like Italian as well as English. So uh, nice blog. And uh, what we're going to do is we take a look at what makes Simplice 7, which they have codenamed Comfortably Numb, what makes them different? What what have they what have they done that that sets them apart from other Debian based distros? It is a open box based distro, or at least it was. They're kind of moving into their own uh, desktop environment, which they have codenamed Vera. Which you know, there are so many Linux distros out there that I really hesitate to call a distro and. They actually say here, since our first release five years ago, our goal is to create an innovative and lightweight operating system, not being a me too open box based distribution like many are showing up lately. And I agree with them. I agree with them 100%, folks. So many people out there will take a, a Debian or Ubuntu, Ubuntu based distro, you know, change out the, the web browser, slap a new wallpaper in it, and call it a, a new distro. And, uh, I'm sorry that there are just too many of them out there like that. If you're thinking about making your own Linux distro, ask yourself what are you going to do that sets you apart from everybody else? Have a clear goal in mind. Who do you want to reach? What what niche do you want to fill? And then work diligently toward that goal. So these guys, uh, let's see, they are moving toward the future, toward Wayland implementation. Um, they're not quite there yet, but they are moving that way. And let's see, um, where are those notes? They have made some huge changes, but it says for a glimpse on what you can find on, in the ISO image, uh, let's see here, you find a brand new control center, which that's pretty cool. How many open box distros have you seen that actually incorporate a control center? I know I haven't. Um, a new desktop launcher, new power manager, screenshot applet, a new mu music player, which is Praga, a new uh, music control menu extension that supports every MP RIS2 based music player. It says you can even control Spotify with it. A new artwork and many other new things. It says the best thing, you change the wallpaper and the system adapts the theme color to it. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, I've been playing around with it a little while, and I've been really impressed by it. Uh, I have some release notes over here, and I like it when a distro includes good release notes. So, yeah, I really enjoy their website. I believe it provides excellent support for their users. And uh, this may be the new thing as far as Debian-based uh, open box lightweight desktops. So I do have it installed in a virtual as usual it has two gigs of RAM, two dedicated processors. So uh, I did, I have been playing with it for a while. Let's get over here to it. I did a clean install because I want to see, want to show you what happens on your first run. So let's go ahead and log in. I did install the guest editions. Now you get this on your first install or on your first run after installation but also if you run this in a live environment and this thing works great in a live environment but right here on the desktop you get kind of a tutorial a how to walking you through what to do so to start right click anywhere on the desktop and great you just open the police menu uh, now right type something in the keyboard so let's type in fire oh here we go so let's type in fire and it just starts searching there we go. So this is pretty cool. It says from here you can easily open new applications, press escape to hide the launcher. And we'll do that in just a moment. 
but I really like this type of integrated launcher right on the desktop uh, for open box distro I've not seen this before and uh, it's pretty impressive so let's push escape let the tutorial go it says now you can use some please enjoy I really like how they've uh, incorporated this onto the desktop this is pretty cool okay so looking at the Simplice desktop it does use OpenBox as its window manager uh, has a tent 2 panel running along the bottom which you know if, if you watch my uh, OpenBox configuration video you, it'll show you how to move this should you choose you can move it to the top the side wherever you, you want to put it but looking at the panel itself it looks like we have Bluetooth support which I haven't seen Bluetooth support on, on an open box distro before uh, we have a clipboard manager our network control volume control battery monitor and your calendar and clock so right clicking on the desktop will bring up the context menu you have a shortcut to the terminal emulator that's it look like they're using rocks term yep rocks term for the terminal yeah confirm close uh, the web browser that they're using let's fire this up it is taking a moment to launch but then again this is first first run okay so we're running ice weasel which is the open source version of Firefox you have XChat IRC down on the application menu for accessories you have clip it which is the clipboard manager disks this looks like it's probably going to be okay a hard drive analyzer which or just statistics on your hard drive shows you your partitions where things are being used okay we have mouse pad for your text editor a screenshot uh, screenshot utility which is integrated there was a note in the release notes if you do run this in uh, VirtualBox it said don't take any more than one screenshot so there, there's a uh, known issue there uh, X, X archiver and XF burn for your optical media for graphics you have a document viewer for your PDF GNU paint and Mirage for your uh, for your artistic side there for your, your photo manipulation for internet you have claws as your email client you have an FTP client again ice weasel for your web browser you get for your BitTorrent and XChat IRC for office applications you have Abbey Word and numeric Abbey Word being your word processor at you know Abbey Word and numeric you know Abbey Word for word processing numeric for spreadsheets for most people this is all you'll need Abbey Word and they're, they're fully compatible with Microsoft Office products so yeah for a lightweight solution this is great uh, sound and video we have known play known M player for your music or for your uh, videos rather Praga for your music then you have your volume controls under system tools let's see PC man FM is your fi is your uh, file browser uh, you have a root terminal rocks term let's take a look at the task manager so it's running on 200 and eh, 260 270 uh, meg of RAM really slim let's get back down here to that again uh, under administration you have print settings and synaptic package manager and for preferences you have uh, of course Adobe Flash Player is already installed that's nice to see there's that Bluetooth manager your monitor settings network connections the tent 2 panel and screensaver so yeah for the tent 2 panel this is where you're going to go in you'll you have to go in and then open up your uh, default settings here let's see there we go and from in here you'll be able to to manipulate this panel however you choose if you want to move it around um, what what side it's on you can actually turn on an auto hide feature if you choose I'm gonna leave it where it is for now but in here if, if you're not happy with where the tent 2 panel is you can move it around right here from this control center so we'll go ahead and exit out of that let's see under places uh, we have shortcuts to your home folder desktop 
trash bin, computer, and your file system. Theming is consistent. It's, it's pretty basic, but it's not bad. All right, here's that uh, applet for controlling your music. Nothing's playing right now, but if you were to launch, um, if you were to launch, say, Praga or, or Spotify or something, uh, you can control it right from in here. You launch settings. This is your control panel. And uh, it's not bad. It's basic. It has everything you need. You can control your appearance, your theming, icons, everything right from in here. Uh, your auto, auto start options. Nice little toggles to turn things on and off. Let's see. Uh, desktop shortcuts. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a simple control panel, but as far as an open box system goes, it's pretty good. And again, you can just start... Uh, Typing, if I type ice, there's ice weasel. Click on it and launch it. So, hey, and the second time around, it is launching much faster. So, yeah, I really like the direction this thing is heading in. You know, it really broke my heart last year or earlier this year to see that Crunchbang had folded. Uh, I know that they've been having some issues lately, and uh, I was really fond of that distro. You know, I. I like my slim, lightweight distros. I, I, I love Openbox and, and Simplice, and this thing's a breath of fresh air. I, I don't know, I just, something about it. I like the way it feels. I like how responsive it is. I like the way it looks. Um, you know what, there was one other thing I wanted to check out here. Let's see, let's go into settings, the desktop, I think this is, okay, here's our wallpaper. Remember on their web panel or on their website they said if you change the wallpaper that the theming would change. So let's pick something that's totally different from the current. Okay. And supposedly it's going to change the theming somehow. Which uh Okay. Maybe they're talking about like the highlighting. I notice the highlighting's different. I didn't really pay attention to it. Let's change it back and see if it see if it changes there. So we'll go back to the desktop. Let's go back to the blue. Close it. So yeah, hey, that was pretty cool. So our highlighting is now blue again where it was gold when we changed the desktop. So that's off to a pretty nice start. I can't wait to see where that goes. All right, folks, that, that was actually pretty impressive, especially coming from an open box. Now, who would I recommend this for? I, I will not recommend an open box-based distro to a, new, to a new user. I think it's just too foreign. And although this is actually you know, fairly friendly, um, if you are a new user to Linux and are experienced in uh, another operating system and not afraid to get your hands dirty, you may want to experiment with this, but I wouldn't use it as your primary. Uh, if you're an intermediate user to advanced user, sure. I mean, th this this distro has been around for five years. I don't think they're going anywhere, um, and they just keep growing with every every release. They're they're making strides on their own, and uh, man, this, this it's it's really impressive to me. I, I I like the direction they're heading in. So yeah, if you're intermediate to advanced user. Give this a try. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Uh, if you've tried it, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, thank you for joining me today, folks. Give, give Sim Please a try. Leave your questions, comments, and emotional outbursts below. But please keep it professional. Keep it friendly. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, and share. And I hope to be with you soon for another video.